on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, a property of Learfield Sports. Touchdown, Alabama! Live from Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa, this is Hey Coach. Presented by Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Hey Coach is brought to you by Golden Flake, the official chip of the Crimson Tide. Your Alabama Ford dealers, Alabama Saturdays, built Ford tough. Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. And by Coke Zero, real Coke taste, zero calories. Here is your host, Tom Roberts. Tuesday evening edition of Hey Coach. I guess you'd call this a special Thanksgiving edition of our radio show. We've got uh, Hey Coach and the Nick Saban Show for the next 90 minutes or so, presented by our friends at Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. It is, of course, Iron Bowl week at the University of Alabama. And all you folks here at Bob's Victory Grill, are you ready to beat the Tigers at Bryant-Denny Stadium on Saturday? I kind of figured that might get a cheer. Well, Coach Nick Saban is going to join us in about 30 minutes from now to talk about that game. And also, we'll talk about our finalists for some major national awards. Just named today, Landon Collins, a finalist for both the Bronco Nagurski and Jim Thorpe Award. Amari Cooper, a finalist for the Boletnikoff Award. And J.K. Scott, a finalist for the Ray Guy Award. So great things happening for our football players because they're doing great things on the field. Now, when the coach gets here, if you have questions for him, you're sitting there at home, give us a call at 877-202-BAMA. If you're here at Bob's Victory Grill, we have a sub tonight. Courtney Burns is here. Courtney, where are you? She's standing up right over here. She'll have the microphone. She'll be right here at the corner of the bar. We've got a $20 Chevron gift card, a $50 shrimp basket gift card, a spatula, and a T-shirt. So some good prizes here if you want to ask the coach a question. In basketball, we have SEC Players of the Week aplenty. Levi Randolph, the Men's Player of the Week in the league, and Ashley Williams for the Tide Women. The men are just back from Kansas City after splitting their games in the Hall of Fame Classic up there. We're going to talk on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Hotline with Brian Passick in just a few minutes. The women went 3-0 and in their Hall of Fame that was played at the University of Kansas. They are playing right now against Alabama A&M over at Foster Auditorium. And it's 22 to 20, the Tide on top, and that one will keep you posted. Bama Volleyball also playing right now at Missouri. Ed Allen's team actually opened Iron Bowl week with a victory over Auburn last Friday night. And today, the Tide's Crystal Rivers and Cat Hudson were named to be all SEC team. And one of a note, congratulations to Bama fans, supporters, students, uh, all of you combined to beat Auburn in the Beat Auburn Beat Hunger Food Drive. Our students and fans collected just over 300,000 pounds of food during the drive. So we've got a lot to do over the course of the next 90 minutes. We're going to start talking Bama basketball coming up next. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Looking for the ultimate tire for your performance luxury touring vehicle? Look no further than the new Ventus S1 Noble 2 from Hankook Tire. Packed with the latest design and compounding elements focused on maximizing efficient water evacuation, providing impressive wet handling and braking, increasing cornering grip, and improving winter condition traction. The Ventus S1 Noble 2 is the ideal balance of all season and ultra high performance. To see more of the Ventus S1 Noble 2, visit Tires for Less Incorporated in Coleman. Be one with it. Hankook Tires. Jan here and Toyota Thon is on. This year it's so big that I got an intern. Jan's intern here. Come in for huge deals on new Toyotas. Toyota Thon is the biggest event of the year and it ends January 5th. No, I say that. Okay, what do I say? Can I get your dry cleaning, some coffee, a big piece of cake? Toyota Thon is on. Get 0% APR for 36 months on a new 2015 Toyota Camry. Offer valid November 4th through January 5th, 2015. Zero down with approved credit. Monthly payment for every $1,000 financed is $27.78. Excludes tax, tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. Cannot combine with other offers. Hey, Alabama fans, make every day feel like game day with the University of Alabama Visa Check Card from Regions. Regions helps you move life forward with checking account features like online banking with bill pay, mobile banking with Regions Mobile Deposit, and cashback rewards. 
Regions is a proud sponsor of your Alabama Crimson Tide and is the official bank of the SEC. Visit Regions.com slash GoBama for more information or go to any Regions bank to order your University of Alabama check card today. Regions, member FDIC. Terms, conditions, and fees may apply. Hey, Tide fans, when you're getting ready for this week's game, stock up on Golden Flake. Pick up your favorite bag of Golden Flake potato chips, tostados, or cheese puffs, and you'll be ready to tailgate like a true Tide fan. Golden Flake, the favorite chip of the Alabama Crimson Tide. The best choice you can make is a big bag of Golden Flake. You're listening to Guy Talk, live from the Sport Clips Haircuts locker room. Caller, you're on the air. My girlfriend beat me playing one-on-one. Ooh, sounds like you need to hit up a Sport Clips for an awesome haircut experience and some quality man time. I don't my girlfriend always takes me to her salon. Nonsense. Be your own man and get a great haircut in a guy-friendly place from stylists who know what guys need. You may be right. Sure, I'm right. Now grab your Y chromosome, get down to Sport Clips, and ask for the MVP. Sport Clips. It's good to be a guy. Welcome back to Bob's Victory Grill to Hey Coach, presented by Alpha. And let's talk Alabama basketball, the Bama men. Got a win at uh, Kansas City in the Hall of Fame Classic. And joining us on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Hotline, our color analyst on this uh, Crimson Tide Sports Network, Brian Passick. Brian, how you doing on this Wednesday evening? Doing great, Tom. How are you? Doing super. And I know you got to love what's happening with this basketball team right now. You played a, a really tough team in Iowa State, lost to them, but came back and got a win over Arizona State last night. And how about Levi Randolph? He's playing the greatest basketball of his career, isn't he? No doubt about it. Levi has been terrific all year long. He's the SEC Player of the Week, the reigning SEC Player of the Week. And and he's probably had his best two games after he was already named. I had one of the best games of his career last night against Arizona State. What a performance he had. 28 points. Uh, Was great on the defensive end. Uh, did a good job of, of getting to the basket, going to the free throw line, 10 for 10 there. Uh, just a terrific job. When Alabama needed big plays, they went to their captain, Levi Randolph, and he produced. Well, it's, it's wonderful to see Levi. He's been one of my favorites since uh, he set foot on campus, just plays his heart out, already has his degree, and uh, is having an outstanding year. Let's talk about the two games up in Kansas City. First of all, on Monday night, you played the number 14 team in America in Iowa State and uh, fought them uh, all the way to the bitter end, didn't you? Yeah, a very good Iowa State team, a team that was in the Sweet 16 a year ago, had some injuries in the NCAA tournament and wasn't able to advance, and they expect to at least get back to the Sweet 16 and possibly further. So Alabama went to an excellent team in really a road environment, even though it was in yeah. Kansas City. Several Iowa State fans made three-hour drive from Ames, and it was tough. And Alabama didn't do it particularly well, but they were right there to the end. Iowa State was able to get the win, but Alabama competed well, and I thought maybe gained confidence uh, playing so well against a really tough opponent. They carried that confidence into a big game last night against Arizona State. Well, Rodney Cooper had uh, his high for the season, 27 points, five rebounds. He must have been on fire against Iowa State. He was, and it was great to see Rodney respond because against Southern Miss the game before, he had two points and two rebounds that really struck in that game. But you love to see seniors, your veteran players, respond, come back with one of the best games that he's had in a long time was just one off of his career high he got against LSU a couple of years ago and uh, didn't have as good a game last night against Arizona State, uh, but it shows you what a team that Alabama has with that guy, like Rodney Cooper, who gives uh, 20, 27 one night and then Levi Randolph the next night, 28. Um, you know, to have those options the offense then will definitely help this team moving forward. No doubt about that. And the junior transfer, Ricky Tarrant, with 21 last night. He's been a star already for this team, hasn't he? He really has. And, you know, he sat out last year, practiced for the team, and we had a chance to, to watch him in practice. He's a terrific point guard. 
was the former Conference USA president, Rick Tulane, was a two-time All-USA member, and he's come in and played exceptionally well in the point guard position. 21 points, and he and Levi Randolph uh, combined to Alabama's last 23 point forward, so uh, nice. they both did a really good job, and, and Rick is the guy that's right now coming off the bench, uh, but he's producing and uh, really helping this team on both ends of the floor. Well, and congratulations to you. All those tips you gave to Levi for shooting free throws are paying off. Uh, he's, a, he's a perfect, what, 25 for 25 on the season now? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, amazing. Well, 35 for 35. Ah. And going back to last year, uh, made his last two. So he's 37 straight, which I believe is, is getting close to an all-time Alabama record. I think it's Alvin Lee who... who uh, hit 40 plus in a row. He knocked it to the door there. But the thing that's amazing about what Levi's done at the free throw line is it's not just 37 straight. I mean, the guys hit the rim twice. I yeah. mean, it's all that. <laughs> and he is playing with such confidence and not just making them. He's getting there and he's getting there often because he's attacking the basket and he, he put in the time to win a lot stronger. Uh, just a, a lot more confident player on the offense bed. And I haven't seen anybody around college basketball play better than Levi Rand just right now. Well, it's a wonderful start to the season. I know you and Chris are going to have a good time calling the action the rest of the way. Thanks for joining us tonight, and happy Thanksgiving to you, Maggie, and the rest of the family. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank to you. Brian Passick joining us on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Hotline. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at uh, women's basketball and volleyball and some honors for soccer as well. A reminder, though, to download the official Alabama Game Day app and get every digital football game day program free of charge. It's easy. You just search for Alabama Game Day from your app store and update for each game. So download it now, the official Alabama Game Day app presented by Adobe DPS, your best way to mobilize the tide. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. I'm John, a volunteer at United Way. I'm here at Lincoln Elementary School to find out what this place needs. Who knows better about what kids need than kids, right? Let's ask them. Monsters. Lasers. A pool. Another guinea pig. More lasers. Sprinkle. I was thinking more spinach at lunchtime and maybe more exercise. Nah. Uh -uh. Lasers are cool. When it comes to creating healthier communities, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Because great things happen when we live united. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. My name is Dale Pazinski, and this is how I live united. I volunteer with United Way, helping the homeless in my community by teaching computer skills and helping them build a basic resume to save on their very own USB drive. It's huge when somebody says, hey man, that job that you helped me apply for, I got it. My name is Dale Pazinski. I help people achieve financial independence. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm gonna let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. So, who's going to do what? Flashlights? Nowhere to be found. Emergency supply kits? Not packed. What about blankets? We have an old towel. Cell phones? May not work. Emergency water? Not a drop. Perfect. We all know where we're meeting if we're separated. The library. I'm Jones House. The bus stop. And I'll be waiting here wondering where you all are. Great. It sounds like we don't have a plan. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Hey Coach, presented by Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Let's talk Alabama women's basketball for a moment or so. The Crimson Tide playing over at Foster Auditorium right now. And with a, about a minute and a half to go in the first half, Bama's leading Alabama A&M 31-24. No doubt Ashley Williams having another great game. She is the SEC Player of the Week for women's basketball. She averaged 21 points and eight rebounds last week in four games. 
Three of those were up at the University of Kansas in the Hall of Fame Challenge, and the Tide got big wins against Kansas, Georgetown, and Temple in that stretch. And uh, so congratulations to the uh, Crimson Tide. And Williams also notched a spot on NCAA.com's starting five for her performance during last week. So a good start for Christy Curry's Alabama women's basketball team. As we said, they're playing right now at Foster Auditorium, taking on Alabama A&M. Alabama volleyball also in action right at this moment, playing at the University of Missouri. Uh, we don't have a score early in that match. We can tell you the Crimson Tide last Friday evening knocked off the Auburn Tigers 3-1, to one, a record crowd of 2,169 fans at uh, Foster Auditorium for that one. It improves the Tide's record to 23-6 and six overall, 11-4 and four in SEC play. Uh, Ed Allen's team just doing a super job. Crystal Rivers led the way with 22 kills on 41 total swings, a 341 hitting percentage. And in the match, Sierra Wilson racked up 52 assists. That pushed her over the 4,000 mark for our, her Alabama career. And we'll keep you posted on the Tide playing in that match at the University of Missouri. Today, the SEC announced its all SEC squad for this year. And for the second straight season, Crystal Rivers is an all SEC player. And so is freshman Cat Hudson. Cat also named to the all freshman team in the SEC. So a great season for those two young ladies. Uh, she was the SEC offense, or Crystal was the SEC offensive player of the week three times during the season posted six double-doubles in conference play so far. Overall, her 500 kills this season are a career high, and they're 11th in Alabama's single game history. And one other note for women's sports, Alabama soccer's Meryl Van Dongen and Laura Lee Smith earned academic All-American team honors today. Uh, Meryl Van Dongen, a, a senior, earned first team honors, while Smith is a part of the second team. So congratulations to Meryl and Laura Lee. Well, that's a look at other sports at the University of Alabama. We're going to check out the Cooper Tire Performance of the Week and tell you about the honorary captains for the Auburn game. That's coming up next. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Do game day right. With LG, it's all possible. LG Home Appliances are right in step with your busy world. The largest capacity washer in its class saves you up to 20 minutes per load, even on larger loads. LG's door and door refrigerators offer instant access to gotta have snacks. And with LG Easy Clean, you've got a sparkling oven in minutes. Come check out the latest in LG innovations at your local Best Buy or online at bestbuy.com slash LG. Insurance is simply being prepared. Security. To cover the what ifs. I'm there to help protect my families. You want to protect everything you've worked for. The people that I deal with purchase insurance because they love somebody. I think of insurance as being a promise. That I'm going to be there when you need me. I'm giving them a promise that if they have a loss, I'm going to be there. That's the Alpha way. That's what we do. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Santa here. Now, I realize that Black Friday's a little early to hear from me, especially since everyone hasn't even finished eating their turkey and stuffing yet. But the elves were telling me that if you get to your Ford dealer right now during the Ford Black Friday sales event, you'll get unbelievable deals on lots of great Ford vehicles. Ho, 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 boy. So you better get in your sleigh right now and get to your Ford dealer today because the Ford Black Friday sales event ends December 1st, Cyber Monday. Ho, ho, ho. For every four skilled tradesmen who retire from the construction industry, only one person is entering an apprenticeship program to take their place. So if you're interested in making a good living by working with your hands, a career in construction and a nice salary are squarely within your reach. Go Build Alabama is committed to educating young minds about the opportunities that come from mastering a skilled trade. To learn more, register at GoBuildAlabama.com today. Go Build Alabama and Roll Tide. Bud Light and NFL fans, this is the tale of Wayne Tupperhill, the man who spent the 97 season calculating the perfect Bud Light to ice to cooler size ratio, who once knocked over a priceless marble bust to save a falling Bud Light. But there are many legends like Wayne, and Bud Light's rewarding them with experiences like an ultimate NFL weekend. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Ultimate NFL experience open to U.S. residents 21 plus. No purchase necessary. Ends 12 31 14. See up for whatever.com for details. Void were prohibited. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer. AB St. Louis, Missouri.
Welcome back to Bob's Victory Grill, the Hey Coach, presented by Alpha Insurance. Uh, an update on that Alabama volleyball match at the University of Missouri. They're in the first set, and the Tide and the Tigers all tied at 15 apiece. Let's take a look at our performance of the week, presented by Cooper Tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Visit coopertire.com to find your local Cooper Tires dealer. The uh, Crimson Tide coaching staff selected six players for their performance in the win, the 48-14 victory over Western Carolina last week. Ryan Kelly and our Darius Stewart with the honorees on offense. Landon Collins and Reggie Raglan represented the defense. Gunnar Raber and J.K. Scott made the special teams list. Now it's time for Crimson Tide Tailgate Tradition, brought to you by Red Baron Pizza. One of the traditions we have here is honorary captains for all of our football games. Last week, it was the Good Brothers. This week, it's the Hanna Brothers, John, Charlie, and David. John, of course, was called the greatest offensive lineman in football history by Sports Illustrated. He's a member of the college, the NFL, and the state of Alabama Sports Hall of Fames. He was a unanimous All-American pick for the Crimson Tide. Went on to star for the New England Patriots until his retirement in 1985. A dominating defensive lineman for the Crimson Tide in the 70s was Charlie Hanna. He played on teams that won three SEC and one national championship. Went on to play 12 years in the NFL. He, too, a member of the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. And then there's David Hanna, who competed on teams that would win four SEC and two national championships in the 70s. He earned freshman All-American honors as an offensive guard, then shifted to the defensive line and uh, had an outstanding career. So congratulations to John, Charlie, and David. They'll be our guests on the Crimson Tide tailgate party prior to the game on Saturday. You can see them, get their autographs if you want to come by our radio stage, which is at the corner of Wallace Wade and University out in front of the stadium. And... Uh, You'll be happy to see those gentlemen. They were great players here at the University of Alabama. This Crimson Tide tailgate tradition has been brought to you by Red Baron Pizza. Visit tailgateatyourplace.com for great game day ideas and enter for a chance to win $150,000 in prizes from Red Baron Pizza. Well, you're going to meet our media guests coming up next. A quick reminder from our friends at Best Western. It pays to be a Crimson Tide fan with Best Western of Alabama. Whether you're traveling for work or play, get up to 20% off rates and a chance to win a $100 travel card this fall. Visit bestwesternalabama.com slash roll tide. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Hey, Alabama fans, Academy Sports and Outdoors is the place to go when you need the gear to support your team. Academy is your one-stop shop for Crimson Tide jerseys, T-shirts, caps, novelty items, and more at everyday low prices. Be sure to visit your local Academy store or academy.com to stock up on Crimson Tide gear for the season. Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sponsor of the Alabama Crimson Tide. The right stuff, the low price, every day. Academy. Nothing means it's game day like ice cold Coke Zero, because zero means it's game day. What about when? No. But you don't even know what I was going to say. Were you going to say zero means it's game day, so therefore nothing means it's game day like Coke Zero? No, but... Then it doesn't matter, does it? The refreshing taste of Coke Zero. Zero means it's game day. Hey, this is Coach Nick Saban. Like you, Coke Zero is a proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. So when you're enjoying the game this season, feel free to crack open a Coke Zero and enjoy that too. Roll Tide. Toyota Materials Handling of Alabama is the authorized dealer for Toyota Forklifts, the world's number one forklift manufacturer right here in the USA. Toyota Materials Handling has short and long-term rentals available ranging from 3 to 36,000 pounds, and they provide parts and service for any model forklift. Ask Toyota Materials Handling about their no-hidden-fees guarantee and service loaner program. Call Toyota Materials Handling of Alabama today and speak with their consultants. Call toll-free 866-957-2250 or go online to toyotamaterials.com. Ready for this week's game? We're talking the rumbling roar of Big Al and another epic roll tide. But we're also talking great pizza. As a proud sponsor of the Alabama Crimson Tide, Red Baron Pizza is kicking off your game day at tailgateatyourplace.com. Score big with awesome party ideas, winning recipes, and impressive school trivia. Plus, a chance to win over $150,000 in prizes. Red Baron, roll tide.
Welcome back to Hey Coach, presented by Alpha Insurance. We're live at Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa, and I was just handed a copy of what is bound to be an incredible book called Crimson Heart, Let Me Tell You My Story. It was written by Coach Mal Moore with the assistance, the very able assistance of Steve Townsend. I know it's going to be a great one. It talks about him playing for the Crimson Tide, uh, helping to win national championships, uh, the switch to the wishbone, uh, his wife Charlotte's long battle with Alzheimer's, and just amazing, amazing book. It's uh, available at Books A Million and other retailers beginning December the 10th and online at crimsonheartfoundation.com. All proceeds will benefit University of Alabama Athletics as well as the Mal and Charlotte Moore Crimson Heart Foundation. Found to be a fascinating read because he was an absolutely fascinating man who loved the University of Alabama. Uh, like I said, available at fine bookstores beginning on December the 10th. All right, coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to be joined by Coach Nick Saban. We always have a media guest, and this week our media guest is a guy that, if you listen to JOX in Birmingham at midday every day on the roundtable, you hear him along with, he doesn't get much airtime because he got to compete with Jim Dunaway and Ryan Brown. He is Lance Taylor. Lance, welcome to the show. Uh, Tom, I appreciate you having me. It's been four years now since the last time I was on with you and Coach, and uh, I'm excited about it. Great time of year, a little bittersweet that we're coming towards the end oh, of yeah. college football, but for Alabama, hopefully four more games. Hopefully it is, and you got your voice back. That's good. I'm working on it. Well, that, I know how that battle goes, especially at this time of the year. Nobody understands it unless you're in the business. There are one or two, maybe three times a year where there's something in the air that just doesn't agree with us. Well, you know, and it's, it, it should be that time where maybe the Christmas holidays or in June or July when nothing's important. <laughs> nothing's important. It's yes. not supposed to be Iron Bowl week. <laughs> well, speaking of important, you've got your wife. Are the children here too? Tell uh, me about them. Well, you know, our kids, my wife is actually from Livingston, Alabama, about an hour oh. south. And so my kids went down uh, a day early yesterday, so my wife and I got a date night last night, and so my wife and I came together tonight with her cousin and her husband, and we're actually going to go to Livingston after this tonight, and we will uh, join the kids for a big Thanksgiving feast tomorrow. Uh, everybody always forgets to say their wife's name. It's Bethany. You've been married 15 years? We, we've, uh, you're, this is going to blow you away. We've been together for 27 years. Outstanding. That's outstanding. Been married for 15, dead on. Well, the other th crazy thing is you've been uh, with uh, Dunaway and Brown for, I guess, 11 years now. This week, uh, what's been the topic of conversation uh, as far as keys to the game? Well, you know, we, we talk about this Auburn Tiger team, and, and it's kind of night and day, Tom, from yeah. what we saw last year because Auburn was just heating up and becoming what was an elite football team last year. And I think it's kind of the opposite. This year, Auburn not getting those bounces. Didn't, they don't have the Auburn magic that we saw in 2013. Right. The offense really isn't clicking, and Alabama is viewed as, at least in most people's opinion, as the first, second, or third best team in football. And I, I think Auburn fans are optimistic they might be able to pull this off, but I don't think it's got the buzz it had last year, if that no. makes any sense. No, it definitely doesn't. That. All right, just to relax for a few moments, Coach Saban will join us in about uh, two or three minutes from now. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Our first caller every week brought to you by Alabama 811. Reminding you to be safe. Always call 811 before you dig. It's free. It's the law. Utility companies will come out, locate, and mark those buried lines. Call 811. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. On the next episode of Recipes for Disaster. I'm making beef sliders for my friend Sammy. Nana taught me to always pull meat off the grill early so it's extra juicy. Use a food thermometer to ensure ground beef is 160 degrees, or you could make people really sick. Sandy didn't think twice about the slider she ate until yoga class, when a nasty case of food poisoning turned her downward-facing dog into upward-moving lunch. Watch Recipes for Disaster at foodsafety.gov and learn the steps Maria unwittingly leaves out. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Whew. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. 
Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go fish that! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. You see me around the neighborhood, and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me. We are Feeding America, brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Live from Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa, this is the Nick Saban Show. Presented by Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Also brought to you by Golden Flake, the official chip of the Crimson Tide. Your Alabama Ford dealers. Alabama Saturdays. Built Ford Tough. Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. And by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste. Zero calories. Hot. Now with Coach Nick Saban, here's Tom Roberts. Thank you very much. Roll Tide, everybody, and welcome back to Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa. Head Coach Nick Saban will be joining us very, very shortly as we're getting set for the Iron Bowl on Saturday, the Crimson Tide against the Auburn Tigers. Our media guest this evening, Lance Taylor. Lance, I'm having to work not to call you Lance Tucker who was a pretty good quarterback here at Alabama, a pretty good high school coach in Fayette right now. Well, I get a lot of people confuse me with the Lance Taylor that yep. actually played at Alabama uh -huh. six, seven years ago, who's now an assistant coach well, with, with somebody. The uh, applause you hear in the background is not for Lance or for me. It's for the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, who's joining us live here at Bob's Victory Grill. The coach during the commercial break, I'm sure, will want to go see two of his favorite women. His wife, Terry, and his mother, Mary, are here tonight. I'm glad to see them uh, joining him for the Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, the coach, fresh off the practice field. Coach, I, I guess it really wasn't that long ago you had the team out on the field, was it? No. It's we got off the field at uh, 540. 540? Okay. Yeah. Pretty so. good week of practice. Yeah, it's been pretty good. You know, the weather's been good. You know, we got a lot of guys nicked up in this last game and getting some of them to come back and get some practice reps. So, you know, that's helpful. But the players seem excited about it. It's a great opportunity for them. So I think they're looking forward to it. We're all looking forward to it. Our media guest for this week is Lance Taylor from WJOX's Roundtable. Lance, you get the honor of the first question tonight. Uh, Coach, big day around the country tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Bigger day for most people in state on Saturday with the Iron Bowl. How do you balance the schedule with Thanksgiving tomorrow for your coaches, your players, and most importantly, your wife? Do you tell her, hey, I got two hours for you? How do you do it? No, she tells me she's got two hours for me. <laughs> <laughs> she cooks all day, doesn't she? Yeah, with the caterers. <laughs> Is it difficult, though, on Thanksgiving? No, in, in her defense, she does cook a lot. Right? I'm getting in trouble here. But, uh, you know, we do have players. You asked me about the schedule for the players. We move practice up some so that some of the players can get out early enough that if, if they live in a one- or two-hour radius, they can spend time with their family. So then the players that don't have a place to go come to the coaches' houses. So we have 12, 15 players come to our Thanksgiving dinner with our family tomorrow. And some of the other coaches will have some guys at their house as well. Some of the players take guys home to their house. And then we have at 12, 1 o'clock on Friday, when everybody comes back, we have a sort of Thanksgiving dinner for all the families, coaches, and players. So that's really the only adjustment that we can make in the schedule. We do have to practice at some point tomorrow, and the coaches have to have a little time to get ready for it. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, what you said, I would like to maybe not agree with totally. Um, you know, Thanksgiving is a really, really important time. I think that we all should sort of, you know, kind of assess 
what Thanksgiving is all about and what it means to us, you know, because most of us spend a lot of time thinking about things that we don't have and things that we want, things that we'd like to have, things that we're working for. Right, but seldom do we ever sort of resonate on the things that we have, including the relationships, the family, the health, um, and all the good things that we have. And I think that this holiday is one time that we all should, at some point in time, sit down and say, these are the things that I have to be thankful for. These are the things that I need to think about more because it obviously makes you more positive and more helpful uh, and thoughtful and you know, it keeps a lot of balance in your life when you appreciate the things that you have. So I think Thanksgiving is really important. It's the first thing up, so let's keep that priority right. Yes, sir. Now, when the plate's in front of you, though, are you thinking about the food seriously or are you thinking about Auburn? Well, I'll be thinking about the players that will be there at our house with us and our family, all right, because that's the most important thing. You know, I think about Auburn about 23 hours a day, so I think I can have one hour <laughs> where I don't think about them. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, we got uh, four guys in the best seat in the house tonight, J.R. Rivas, Ricky Farley, Gary Penault, and with our question from the best seat in the house, Alex Braswell. Alex, go for it. Uh, good evening, Coach. I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I wanted to ask you, playing Auburn with a hurry-up defense or hurry-up offense, which we really hadn't seen very much this year, how do you all prepare and how do you all plan to slow them down or stop them? Every team we played this year has had a hurry-up offense. I, I mean, maybe they don't go as fast as, as Auburn, you know, does. Uh, most of these teams that go no huddle go at different paces, you know, at different times in the game. They have three or four different cadences that they use to how fast NASCAR is when they go fast. And, you know, most of the time when Auburn hits a play on you, they're going to go fast on the next play, and they might even run the same play again and again and again. I mean, when he points at the ground, baby, it's coming again, all right, and you better stop it. Like last year, they run the counter on us three times in a row. I mean, they hit it for like a 12, 13-yard run, a 7-yard run. They ran it again. We finally stopped it, so they finally slowed down. Well, the problem with that is, is if they get on a roll, you know, you can't substitute players. You can't get guys in and out. Guys start getting tired, so you, you lose your ability to execute to some degree. This is very difficult to practice against, but we have played against it more this year than ever before. I mean, I don't know that we've played anybody that gets in a huddle. Maybe LSU got in a huddle a few times. But other than that, it's no huddle all the time. And all, all these people will go fast on you, some more often than others. And I think that's one of the, the things that make, makes Auburn a little bit unique is they will go fast on you every chance they get. So, you know, now, the downside of this is we go no huddle. So we've been going fast on teams. All right, so what I've seen happen, and we've had to adjust and adapt here a little bit in the last couple of weeks, is we've played more plays on offense. We've played more plays on defense because we go fast, and we play against more fast-paced teams. So what kind of wear and tear does that have on your team long term? And we've had to adjust practice and do some things differently, try to keep our players a little fresher because of that. So what we're going to try to do to stop it uh, we practice all the time against it. And uh, I think the most important thing when you play a team like this is there's not a lot of opportunity to create bad plays. All right, so the most important thing is everybody's got to execute with discipline and do their job. I mean, be exact in how they're supposed to do their job. And you've got to have discipline eye control because old 14 is going to take that ball and ride it. I, and if you watch him and think the guy with dives got the ball and you're supposed to have the quarterback or leverage the blocker who's coming out to block you, it's just like playing against the wishbone, except it doesn't look that way. And they, you got to stop the run against these guys or you're never going to be in positive down and distance. And what a lot of people don't realize is they're the number one third down team in our conference. Yep. And the reason for that is, is they get a lot of third down and two, three, and fours because they run the ball so effectively that they don't get in a lot of long yardage situations, all right? So it's very, very important that you control the line of scrimmage and you can stop the run. And then when you do get to third down, the quarterback is very elusive and he doesn't necessarily run that many times to make first downs, although he's capable and he can and he will. He extends plays and makes a lot of big plays in the passing game by, by running around scrambling and finding open people down the field. So this is a very challenging, you know, offensive group. And, 
Uh, you know, our defensive player is going to have to do a great job. We did a good job in the game last year until the end. We didn't do a very good job in the end, you know. Um, so the last drive, and we didn't do a very good job. And I think that's a challenge to the players is you cannot give in in this game to anything. You know, and players think they get tired, all right. But, you know, really fatigue and being tired is really sort of a mental state to me because I can picture you sitting home in your chair. You got a lazy boy, I'm sure, right? Yeah, <laughs> me too. All right, and I can picture you just saying, man, I'm really tired and I'm like chilling out here and just watching TV or whatever. Something happens to one of your kids out in the yard, you think you're about ready to die. You got all kind of energy. You know, there was a, there was a, boxing, there was a boxing story and a trainer told about a boxer who was going in the 13th round. I might have even told this here before. I don't know. I don't think so. And he, he says, I can't go. Throw in the towel. I cannot go. I cannot go back out there. I'm so tired, and, and I just can't go. I, there's no way. He says, you sure you want me to throw in the towel? And the trainer literally wouldn't let him throw in the towel and pushed him back out there. The guy lands a punch in the 14th round, comes up with a flurry, knocks the guy out, and wins the fight. Walks back to the corner. trainer said, I thought you were tired. <laughs> and the guy said, I thought I was too. But he really wasn't. So that's my point. You know, being fatigued, being tired, not having energy, that's kind of a state of mind. You, you kind of decide that. You know, your body doesn't really have any way to tell you other than your brain. So it's about mental. And you can't give in to anything in games like this. It's going to be a physical game. It's going to be a tough game. And guys got to be able to play for 60 minutes, and you got to be able to finish. You know, one second. People have been talking about one second around here for a long time. And, you know, people ask me the importance of this game. You, you know how I kind of got to the importance of this game? When you I realize, the first No, I, I realize all, all the, 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 the games that we've had since we've been here. This is the eighth one. But the past is never dead when it comes to this game. Yep. So that signifies the importance it is to all the people. The game never goes away. People still talk about Cam Newton coming back on us in 2010. Yep. I mean, they talk about that play last year. They, it never dies. And now, I, people can't even remember the score of the LSU game two years ago. That's right. <laughs> we all remember the 85 kick, and there's, there's a, their big one seems like every, every two or three years. I guarantee you the guy who's on the Alabama 811 first call remembers it. And you got to fuss at me a little bit. Pee Wee was here the last two weeks. He's on the phone tonight. Pee Wee, we're old tight. Roll Pee Wee. Um, Coach Saban, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, but I told you you were good luck. You're supposed to be here, son. Yes, sir, I know, but my real job called today. But I do have some backup out there. I got oh, I some of those got people out there you. got I, me I covered. I got you out of that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Coach. Damn, if this game's more important than Thanksgiving, it's more important than your job. <laughs> Come on. Well, I, I, I got some of those people out there that, that's got my back covered for this game. But uh, the question I had, Coach, was uh, this week it, it seems to me like more important than anything that we've, that we've done that we've got to really have a balanced attack this week as far as uh, running and passing the game maybe more so as in any of the other games, to try to keep these guys off the field just because of what you were just talking about, what they were capable of on offense. And I was wondering if that's been an emphasis, you know, that maybe you have talked to Coach Kiffin about it, uh, about trying to keep it into a more balanced game. Well, there's no question about that. It's, it's uh, part of the strategy you, you have to have when you're playing against these kind of teams that, you know, if you play too many plays of defense, uh, it's, it's going to take its toll. Now, you've got to play more players, and you've got to play them early. Uh, you can't let your big guys get tired. Uh, you've got to play special teams a little bit different because a lot of our best special teams players are defensive players who are going to have a significant role in the game. Uh, so we can't really, you know, allow that to happen. Uh, like Landon Collins played 108 plays against Mississippi State. Played 88 plays of defense, which is too many. All right, and, um, you know, played like 20 plays on special teams because he's probably the best special teams player on our team. And we try to limit those roles. Well, you know, 
the kicking game is an important part of the game as well. So if you take all these players off special teams and you don't do a good job and you lose in special teams, you lose a lot of field position. And about 100 yards of field position is about the same as six points in a game. All right, so, you know, returns, whatever it is, that's going to add up to points sooner or later. So to keep the ball on offense, turnovers are huge in games like this, but to be able to control the ball on offense and keep the ball on offense and keep the defense off the field is really an important part of these kind of games. I don't think there's any question about that. Now, when you go no huddle, you don't play as slow on offense, but we play better when we go no huddle and we play better when we go fast. All right, so we're, we're going to have to do that as well, but I think it's important, really important, you bring up a good point that we keep the ball in this game. 108 plays for Landon Collins, one of the reasons why he is a finalist for the Bronco Nagurski Award and the Jim Thorpe Award. More questions for the coach coming up. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Tide fans make University Mall part of your football weekend game plan. Avoid the campus traffic. Take the Tuscaloosa Charter Tide Ride from University Mall to Bryant Denny and back for just $10. While you're here, enjoy great shopping, dining, the area's best selection of Bama fan gear, and special Crimson weekend savings. We're West Alabama's in place to shop for over 30 years. That's University Mall. Roll Tide. On game day, whether it's on the field or at the tailgate, the best rise to the top. Because when the Crimson Tide are driving to victory, there's no compromise. That's why Ford delivers available EcoBoost engine technology that offers a winning combination of power and efficiency. Just another reason why Ford is America's best-selling brand. Check out F-150, Fusion, Escape, and the all-new Expedition at your local Ford dealer. America's best-selling brand based on 2013 calendar year sales. The tide will be rolling soon, but if you haven't gotten your Bama Banking Visa check card, you're not really ready for kickoff. Bama Banking, exclusively from BBVA Compass, is the perfect way to show your pride in the tide. Call 1-800-COMPASS or go online at bbvacompass.com slash Bama. Bama builds champions. At BBVA Compass, you can be a champion, too, by sporting one of our limited edition Bama Banking check cards. Sign up for Bama Banking and show your pride every time you use your check card. Call 1-800-COMPASS or go online at bbvacompass.com slash Bama. 100 years says a lot about Cooper Tires. It's adjusting to the growing demands of our customers and the roads they drive on. It's a century's worth of innovation delivering the most advanced tires on the market. Case in point, the all-new CS5 Touring Tire, designed for the way real drivers really drive. There's no other tire like it. Come in and see what 100 years of innovation looks like with the all-new CS5 Touring. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. The give, Derrick Henry, right through the sleeve, inside the five. He fights his way in. He's in for a touchdown. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry won one of a touchdowns last week in the Crimson Tide's homecoming victory over Western Carolina. Welcome back to the Nick Saban Show, presented by Alpha Insurance. They're the best agents in the business call Alpha. Our media guest this week, Lance Taylor from WJOX. And Lance, uh, we've seen some great running backs in this game both sides of the ball, but particularly for the University of Alabama, and I think there's two pretty good ones right now. Yeah, I would agree with you. We just heard Derrick Henry and T.J. Yeldon, the other guy. Got to keep those guys healthy, um, but great running backs. And then on the other side, Cameron Norris Payne leading the SEC in rushing right now. Yep, they're leading the SEC. In fact, Alabama and Auburn right now are 1-2 in third down conversions. The coach talked about Auburn at, uh, I think, about 53%. Alabama's at 50%. And uh, from what he said, I, I would agree with him completely, but it all boils down to what you can do on first and second down, makes your third down conversion rate pretty high if you can pick up seven or eight yards. Yeah, and I think it helps to have a guy like Amari Cooper yeah. where you can actually move those sticks and get into the second threes and the, the third and twos. And Lane Kiffin, uh, you never know which direction he's going to go. And it's nice to have that luxury. Do we run with guys like Yeldon and Henry or do we, we go up top to a guy like Cooper? Amari, by the way, named a finalist this week for the Boletnikoff Award. You know, these names that are attached to the awards, and Coach Saban rejoining us on the stage, I can remember Boletnikoff and uh, Bronco Nagurski and guys like that. Uh, 
Coach, I love it when our players are, are considered for those awards. Well, I think it's great for the, you know, player. I love seeing our players get, you know, positive reinforcement for the great efforts in terms of, you know, how they play, but also how they represent the university yeah. and the program. And uh, I think our players do a fantastic job of doing that in a first-class way. And, you know, when we have guys that have been productive, as these guys that you mentioned that are, you know, up for these finalists of these awards, um, you know, I'm hopeful that they do get recognized and they're all very deserving and they've had great uh, careers here. Uh, but, you know, in J.K. Scott, yeah. his career has only been not even one year, whole season long yet, but the guy's done a fantastic job as a freshman. He certainly has. Lance, you have a question for the coach? Uh, what is the last thing you Googled? I don't Google. <laughs> have you ever Googled? No. I don't know how. I don't know what you would do. I don't even send a text. I don't know how to text. I get some text, but I don't send any. Um, I don't use a computer other than to watch film. I, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't send emails. I don't get emails. Linda might get a few emails, but, you know, we go out of town for a weekend. Terry says, I got 362 emails. I said, how many did I get? She said, none. <laughs> if you don't send any, you don't get any. You don't get any. That's, That's a good right. point. <laughs> We've got a bunch of fans here at Bob's Victor Grill who want to ask questions, including a gentleman right there who's dressed in red and has a beat Auburn button on. Tell us who you are, where you're from. Hi, I'm Nick Tolstick. I'm from Gordon. Coach, I have a question. How is it that with the grueling schedule that you play every year, how do you keep all of these guys playing at the level that you have them playing at, trying to achieve excellence the way that they do? I mean, how do you do it every single week? Well, you know, I think it, it, it really is, um, you know, a little bit about who they are, who they want to be, how important it is to them. Uh, but, you know, we sort of have a, a program and a standard that, you know, we've sort of established here. And, you know, the leadership on the team, you know, helps to do that. The coaches understand what that is whether it's off-season program, summer conditioning program, how we do fall camp, how we practice, how we finish, uh, how we practice throughout the course of the season. Uh, it's about the players trusting in the process of how we do what we do. Now, I don't, none of this works unless you have really good players, and we've always had really good players. And I think sometimes when you lose really good players, you know, it can affect, you know, your team. Not really how they play, but how productive they can be. Uh, and, you know, this season we've been pretty fortunate. Kenyon Drake was an awful good player that, you know, we, we lost at, in the Ole Miss game, and we've had some guys in and out of the lineup. But, you know, knock on wood, we've been pretty fortunate to be able to keep, you, you know, pretty good continuity, you know, in our groups. This is probably uh, the most guys that we've had nicked up for a game. Uh, but, you know, this just it's just next man up, you know, when that happens. Um, you know, the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. They had the most injuries of any team in the NFL, and they won the Super Bowl. And the next guy that got an opportunity just stepped up and did a good job. You know, I think the Cardinals are very close. Arizona Cardinals this year are very close to being the top team in the NFL in injuries, and they got the best record. All right, so it's how people take advantage of the opportunity that they get when they get it. Uh, and, you know, that's something that I think as coaches, we have to trust in the players and, and believe in them. They have to trust in the program and the things that we're telling them to do to help them be successful personally, academically, and athletically. And I think that's how we get the standard, you know, that we get. Do we get it on as consistent basis it, that I would like for it to be? Not always. Like last week, I thought our team was a little bit flat. All right, but we'd been through some emotional games, and you know, I was disappointed in the energy level and intensity we had starting that game, and it kind of showed. And you know, the players responded as the game went on. But as a coach, I always want to see our guys perform to their best, you know, to be the best, so that they have the best opportunities to be successful. You know, we want to create value for our players which is how are they going to be more successful in their life or having been involved in the program. So everything we do is to try to promote that. Well, their performance on the field is part of that, but their performance off the field and in the classroom is also a part of that. And we get pretty good results in those areas too, but it's structure, but it's having the right guys, making the right choices and decisions so that they can play at a high level all the time. And 
you know, we have a lot of people that assist us and help us, you know, and here's a good process. Here's the motivation that you need to be in the process. And I spend a lot of time making all these things about the player. You know, I have a player come to me and, you know, he says, well, I'm disappointed that I'm not playing or, you know, some player did something that he shouldn't have done, right, whether it was on the field or off the field. You know, and I call them in and I say, what are your goals? What are, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? Oh, I want to graduate from school and I want to play in the NFL someday. Well, tell me how these things that you're doing right here. Here, I got a list right here. How are any of these things going to help you do what you want to do? Guy looks at you like, they're not. Well, then why are you doing them? Because it really is your choice, you know, to do the right thing or the wrong thing or to choose how you want to perform and how you want to play, who you want to be, how you want to act. Uh, and we're about creating value for our players by, you know, how they act, what they do on and off the field and in the classroom. So I think that's, that's the start of developing the kind of attitude that we need in the players so they have a chance to be successful. All right, we got our first question tonight from the Nick Saban Show blog at AL.com. Dave in Huntsville says, Coach, now that this is your eighth season here, does the Iron Bowl mean more to you personally than any other game on the schedule, or is it simply just another SEC slugfest? Well, you know, the game means a lot because of what I said before. Yeah. I mean, it means a lot to all the people in this state. Uh, it never goes away uh, for all the people who live in this state, and we're part of those people. Yeah. That's where we live. All right, so we got to hear about it all the time, so it makes it an important game. I'm sure it makes it an important game for them, too. So, and if you're a real competitor, uh, you know, you're a little embarrassed when things don't go the way you want it to go, uh, and you do everything you can to correct it. But if you're a real champion, you do everything in advance of what you need to do so that you can do the things the way you need to do them so that it doesn't happen the way you don't want it to happen. You know, it's, talk, it's about being exact, you know, and exactly how you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. You know, like they asked me today about the last play, you know, one second. Well, we know we had our players in the huddle. We said they got a returner back there. We got a kick and cover yeah. on the field goal. Nobody covered until they saw whether the guy made or missed the field goal. You can see it on the film. I watched it just again. Well, it's too late now. Yeah. You got to go. You got to go. When the ball gets kicked, you got to go. We practice it. That's what you're supposed to do. But everybody's so excited about the possibility. Yeah, that yeah. you're going to make it that nobody covered. So, you know, you got to live with the consequences. But we, w we didn't do exactly or trust in exactly what we were supposed to do so that we could defend that play. Well, and you also talked about earlier in the week it wasn't just that play. The last five minutes or so were not that good, were they? Oh, no. We had four penalties, yeah. the ball inside the 20-yard line three times, and never scored a point. All right, we're at the half hour. We're going to take a break here. First of all, pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This month of November is National Adoption Month. There are almost 5,000 children in foster care in Alabama. They need loving, nurturing families to care for them. Please consider becoming a foster parent or adopting a child from foster care. Call 1-866-4AL-KIDS for more information. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Jan here and Toyota Thon is on. This year it's so big that I got an intern. Jan's intern here. Come in for huge deals on new Toyotas. Toyota Thon is the biggest event of the year and it ends January 5th. No, I say that. Okay, what do I say? Can I get your dry cleaning, some coffee, a big piece of cake? Toyota Thon is on. Get 0% APR for 36 months on a new 2015 Toyota Camry. Offer valid November 4th through January 5th, 2015. Zero down with approved credit. Monthly payment for every $1,000 financed is $27.78. Excludes tax, tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. Cannot combine with other offers. Hey, Tide fans, when you're getting ready for this week's game, stock up on Golden Flake. Pick up your favorite bag of Golden Flake potato chips, tostados, or cheese puffs, and you'll be ready to tailgate like a true Tide fan. Golden Flake, the favorite chip of the Alabama Crimson Tide. The best choice you can
Be the hero of your tailgate this season. Go to eatatjacks.com to place your order for the ultimate fan fuel. Get your team ready for the big game with Jack's delicious hand-breaded chicken fingers, fried chicken, sides, biscuits, and more. Jack's now a proud partner of the Crimson Tide. Now let's talk about sport clips. You're a guy, and when you need a haircut, you need it right now. So come on in, because at Sport Clips, you never need an appointment. Visit any of our Alabama stores and ask for the MVP service. Sport Clips, it's good to be a guy. That splashing you hear, that's Cletus. He makes a living towing steamboats up and down the Mississippi. Not with a boat, but with his brawn. Smith & Forge Hard Cider is a lot like Cletus here. Strong, sturdy, but not too sweet. Cletus, put down that lighthouse. Built from apples, built to refresh. Smith & Forge Hard Cider, made strong. Now available in draft, so saddle up to your favorite tavern and enjoy a tankard. Uncharted Cider Company, Memphis, Tennessee. Please enjoy our ciders responsibly. Two wides left, one wide right. Again, Tyron Jones to the right of his quarterback. He gets the handoff. Tyron comes left, turns it up. He is in. Touchdown, Alabama! Tyron Jones with one of the touchdowns Mamba scored in that uh, 48-14 win over Western Carolina on homecoming. That, of course, the voice of the Tide, Eli Gold. Welcome back to the Nick Saban Show, presented by Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. We're live at Bob's Victory Grill here in Tuscaloosa in Midtown Village. It's bound to be a great place all weekend to, to come and have great food. Obviously, uh, watch a lot of great sports on television. A quick update midway the second half. The Alabama women now with a 55-36 to 36 lead over Alabama A&M. That game being played at Foster Auditorium. Lance Taylor from uh, the Roundtable, our get media guest on this Wednesday evening edition of the Nick Saban Show as the coach makes his way back to the stage. Lance, I would think that you might have another question for the coach, so fire away. I do, Coach. We had a uh, recruiter on not too long ago, and he said the best high school player he ever saw was Allen Iverson in football. You've been recruiting for a long time. Who's the best high school player you've ever saw? Not that he necessarily pans out, but is, is there one guy that when you saw you were just, you, you couldn't believe how good he was? You know, I, I, I uh, really can't say that just right off. I think I'd be disrespecting, you know, a lot of players if I actually, you know, did say that. But uh, there's been a lot of great players that we've had the opportunity to recruit, some that we got to come to Alabama, some that we got to go to other places, and some that went other places and were very, very good players. But uh, I can't honestly say that there's one particular guy that I could just off the top of my head say was better than everybody else. And um, I don't think it would be fair for me to say that. Well, Marcus either. Spears were here. He'd be insisting that he was the best, wouldn't he? Well, that would be his opinion. <laughs> did, did you recruit and him? He, and he was a very good player. Yeah. You know, he was a very good player and a very good basketball player. You know, really, really good athlete, uh, really thought he was going to be a tight end and would yeah. have been a great tight end, but ended up having a very nice career as a defensive lineman. Did you recruit Allen Iverson? No, not that I remember. No. All right, let's go to the Academy Sports and Outdoors hotline. Over in Northport, Terry's on the phone. Roll Tide, Terry. How you doing? I'm fine, Tom. Roll, roll, roll Tide. Thank you know, you Coach, um, being, being born in the, in the, in the 50s um, and, and being an, an Alabama fan, um, I love winning. Um, and, I've, and I've got to see a, a lot of winning, you know, th throughout my life. But, but you said something after the old Miss game that really touched me. And, I, it, and it touched me so much that I, that I wrote it down. You, you said, just as when confronted with adversity in life, the important thing now is how we has how we respond to this loss. And then you went on and you talked about a speech that you had given the team on judgment and decision making, and described uh, all that the university is doing to help the players learn to develop good judgment uh, and to make good good choices and decisions and be aware of the consequences of those uh, decisions. Coach, that impressed me so much that I now try to do that with my children, rather than focusing on their on their uh, successes, I try to encourage them more. You know, when they when they face, you know, you know, difficulty. And I would like to hear you speak uh, a little more on that, if you wouldn't mind, please. 
Well, but I, I think that's something that, um, you know, athletics really offers a lot of lessons in life uh, because, you know, these games and uh, the things that you put in them, how you prepare for them, um, you know, sort of the, the way you play in the game, the discipline that you have, uh, your ability to execute and do your job on a consistent basis. And, and there's always, you know, sort of immediate self-gratification one way or the other for whether you did it right on that particular play or whether you did it wrong. Uh, and then there's the challenge of dealing with both aspects of what just happened. In other words, if I had a bad play, how do I play the next play? And if I had a really good play, how do I play the next play? So, you know, now you're talking about consistency and performance, which really probably defines success. Uh, and I think that sometimes when bad things happen, like losing to Ole Miss for our team, you know, that is the best time that you have to teach, the best opportunity that you have for people to learn uh, if you use it the right way. If you actually specifically can say, okay, here's the things that we did well, all right, here's the things that we need to do better, and if you can show them that these are the things that if they would have done correctly that I had a chance to be successful, and now what do we need to do to correct these things so that we can get better and move on and focus on improving uh, and getting closer to, you know, sort of being the best that we can be. So I think when you take that approach, you have a much better chance of improving. I think what so many of us do uh, is our own ego gets involved, and we're upset that we lost the game. So we're upset at the players. So we really don't use it as an opportunity to teach the players. We kind of take it out on them, all right? So it becomes a negative thing. Uh, we yell and scream at them, and they really don't learn anything. And, you know, I just think that, you know, there, there's a lot of learning opportunities if you do it in a positive way. Uh, and I think our team responded well to that loss. I mean, you know, we grinded through and competed well uh, and uh, done, done a really good job to this point, you know, with our team. And hopefully, you know, we'll be able to continue it on Saturday. A lot of fans here at Bob's Victory Grill appreciate that work they've done. And we always have a bunch of young fans, including two young ladies here. One of them has a uh, sweatshirt on that says, too cute, and I would agree with that. Uh, do you young ladies have a question? If so, tell us who you are, where you're from. I'm Fallon, and I'm from Pell City, Alabama. Hey, Fallon. How are you? Do you have a question for the coach? Yes, I do. My family is half Alabama and half Auburn, and they're coming over for a family dinner Sunday after the Iron Bowl, so some of us will be happier than others. And what advice do you give me besides holding out the dessert to keep the family dinner peaceful? Because, Nick, I've been having to hold out the dessert for at least four or five years, and I want some now. <laughs> well, let, let me give you some advice. I think you should be an actress. <laughs> or a movie star. Yes. Because you really presented that question well. Nick, I'm trying to go for Miss Universe, though. <laughs> oh, well, I can see why. <laughs> Too cute is exactly right. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I really had sort of a similar question last week, and uh, I don't know if I have any good advice for you, um, but I would say this. I would respect both sides and treat both sides with equal respect, whether they're happy or sad with the outcome either way, because I think that would be the classy thing to do, to respect both likes and dislikes and to sort of honor that and be respectful to those that aren't so happy and understand and console them and, you know, sort of share in the joy for the ones that are happy and understand why. But other than that, I can't give you any advice because I don't really know how to deal with that. <laughs> I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the question. Let's go on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Hotline to Pensacola, where Chris is on the line. Roll Tide, Chris, how are you? Roll Tide, Tom, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Coach, happy Thanksgiving to you. All right, thank you, Chris. 
You too. You uh, Coach, family. I've got a question for you. It's actually a two-part question. I know tomorrow being Thanksgiving and all, how do you guys handle practice, you know, getting ready for this Auburn game here this afternoon uh, on Saturday? And also, is this Auburn offense a lot more difficult to defend this year with Nick Marshall throwing the ball a lot more this year? Right. Well, you know, first question, you know, I kind of answered earlier. Uh, we just change the schedule a little bit. We don't really change how much we practice. We just kind of move up practice a little bit so guys can get out a little earlier and maybe have an opportunity to go visit with their family. But uh, everybody does have the opportunity to be with somebody, you know, either go home with the coaches, come to my house, or go visit their family if they're in a couple-hour radius, and or go with other players. And then we have quite a bit of family that comes here to see our players that are coming to the game. They just come a little bit early. and. So everybody on our team in some kind of way has Thanksgiving somewhere with somebody. Um, and I, I think that, um, you know, Auburn's offense has tremendous balance. They are the leading rushing offensive team, you know, so that can't be overlooked. Uh, but I think one of the things that makes them so explosive is, you know, they have some weapons down the field. Uh, in terms of their receivers, they have two guys that have great size and are very explosive, and then they have several other guys that are really either good runners, really fast, really quick, really good catching and running short passes. So they have a really good combination of skill guys, in my opinion, to make plays in the passing game. And the quarterback has, I think, improved dramatically, you know, as a passer, uh, getting them the ball on a more consistent basis. So... Um, you know, that's why they have the best offense in the, in the conference. All right, we have another fan here at uh, Bob's Victory Grill. Karen? Hi. Um, you've talked a lot about the fact that you've never tailgated. And um, first of all, I want to, if you ever decide you want to tailgate, I want you and Miss Terry, y'all have an open invitation to come with our group, who actually is named those people, which I'll tell you that story later. But anyway... Of the things you've never tailgated, what do you think you would enjoy the most about tailgating if you ever did? Just to, not, just to be able to go to a game <laughs> and not sort of have this. You know, I've talked about this before, but my worst time is getting to the game. You know, once the game starts, I'm fine because you're always thinking about the next play, the next situation. What are we going to do on the next third down? What adjustment do we have to make in the game? You know, is it a good time to run this play or that play or this fake or whatever it is? So you're not even thinking about the outcome of the game at all. And as much as you try to stay focused on the process of, of what it is you need to do with the players to help them play well, you know, there's still this always this little anxiety in the back of your head that you're trying to live with about, well, I really want to win this game, you know, and I really want to make sure I do everything I can to help our team be able to do this, whether it's help the coaches, help the players, whatever it is. So th th there's a little bit of a burden that goes with that that you sort of carry around with you all the time. And I, when I say I'd like to go tailgate, I think what I'm talking about is I'd really just like to go to a football game and not have to carry that with me. Now, it wouldn't be as fun once I got there because when the game started, I'd be sitting there like, is this all there is? Because <laughs> <I mean, laughs> when you're right in the middle of playing, man, there's a lot going on, and it's, it's a lot of fun, and you're competing, and, you know, you're part of the team. And, you know, so I'm saying I'll be sitting there, and there ain't nothing <laughs> happening. So, you know, there's good and bad, I guess. <laughs> no anxiety would be deciding whether it's a hot dog or a hamburger, right? No anxiety. <laughs> would be bad when the game started. <laughs> right. But leading up to it, I'd rather be eaten at your tailgate. All right. We've got a few more questions for the coach after we take our final break. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. To a single ember from a wildfire, the branches hanging over your roof look like big matchsticks. And the dry leaves and twigs in your gutter are perfect kindling. Some fire hazards aren't clearly marked and can impact your neighbors. Learn to spot them. Your home is better protected from wildfire when your whole community is prepared. Visit fireadapted.org for tips to get started. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Man, last night we put on an epic light show. So epic. The crowd loved us. Wait, there are only four people out there. Yeah, but did you see their four faces? Their eyes lit up brighter than ours, and we're fireflies. Yeah, we are! 
And we're gonna be out here rocking out our light show at a forest near you. So come check us out. Check us out. Whether you're rocking their world or they're rocking yours, some memories never fade. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Whoa. The moment my son saw a redwood tree. It's is the moment I knew that for him... You can't even see the top of that thing! Even the sky has no limit. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Learn about forests near you and discover cool things to do when you go. Your moment is out there. Find it at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey, the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Coker looks, Coker throws, he has nice lander. He'll make the move, he makes the grab at the three, and he's going in for the touchdown! First career touchdown on the second reception of his career for Michael Nicewander out of Hoover, Alabama, a 12-yarder. A great homecoming memory for Michael Nicewander. A touchdown for the Crimson Tide at Bama's victory over Western Carolina. Welcome back to the Nick Saban Show, presented by Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Lance Tucker, our media guest for the week. And Lance, to me, that was one of the fun things about Western Carolina, is seeing so many of the young players get some time. Well, the young guys and the guys that have put so much into the program that aren't getting a lot of playing time. Right. So it is nice to see. All right. I notice here on the list of things they told me about you that you are one of the voters for the Heisman Trophy. I'm I'm sure you're not supposed to say who you're going to vote for, but will Amari Cooper's name be on your ballot? Um, I think right now when you look at Amari Cooper, uh, he's got to be one of the top five players in college football. He's an elite receiver. I think he's the best receiver in college football. And you look at the focal point of this Alabama offense, they've get, great, got a great collection of skilled guys, but Amari Cooper is that go-to guy. So I think right now he is a top five guy, and I think he's on most people's top five list. Made 90 catches this season for 1,349 yards and 11 touchdowns and a semifinal, a finalist now for the Boletnikoff Award. And uh, Blake Sims, a guy who's throwing it to him, 187 uh, completions and 301 attempts for 2,676 yards, 20 touchdowns and four interceptions. Coach Nick Saban back on stage with us. We have one final question from a fan here at uh, Bob's Victory Grill. And uh, let's see if we can get the microphone to that fan and uh, get a question for the coach. Is she ready? Go for it. Tell us who you are, where you're from, young lady. Say who you are. This is Martha Ann. Hey, Martha Ann. She wants to ask you, with our defense practicing every day with Blake Sims, how will that help us in preparing for her against Nick Marshall? Right. Well, you know, I think it really helps. What used to really help us was when Blake was the scout team quarterback or when uh -huh. he was the second team quarterback, we would put him over and he would go against the defense running their plays. And, you know, I think his quickness and um, athleticism really um, helped our defense understand the speed of what they would have to be up against when the game came. And uh, Blake doesn't do that anymore. But some of the things that they do, we do on offense. So we do practice against each other so many periods every practice. So I think that really makes the players realize the kind of athlete and the kind of speed and quickness they're going to have to play against when they play against Nick Marshall. But, you know, we have a guy, Cooper Bateman, who's a quarterback that we recruited. This is his second year here who's really, really a good athlete and really fast. And he does a really good job for our defensive players in trying to simulate some of these things. I don't think the one thing that always gets the defense when you play these kinds of teams is you can't ever really simulate exactly what they do because the scout team can't quite get it done. And they can't really simulate the pace of play. 
because a scout team has to look at a card all the time to know what play to run or how to run it, like Auburn runs it. So you can't do that really, really fast. So those two things are really hard to simulate in practice. And I think that's, that's why a lot of times when you play these kind of teams, you know, how you start is really, really important because, you know, the players, like we, we played against Texas A&M, who goes really, really fast. You know, in a couple games that we played against them, the first two times we played them, we got behind in the game really early because we, until we got sort of used to the pace of play. So hopefully we've played against enough of these no-huddle teams that, um, you know, that won't be an issue for us on Saturday. Lance Taylor, you have the uh, final question for the coach. I know, Coach, this isn't a time of year where you get to watch a lot of movies, but what is the last movie that made you cry? Man, you asked some tough questions. <laughs> I mean, especially about things that I have never thought about, like for like forever. Did you see Brian's song? Yeah, I did. Did you cry? Probably. <laughs> Old it was Yella. A long time ago. Old Yella. That was even longer. <laughs> you you give me some more, and I'll give you true or false <laughs> on them because I can't I can't even think. And you know, I love movies. I love watching movies, and we've seen some really really great movies. But I love the inspirational you know, type movies, whether it's Seabiscuit or Secretariat or, you know, uh, Hoosiers or, you know, Miracle on Ice. What? Yeah, I like Son of a Woman, you know. Uh, it's a, a thank, Thanksgiving movie, favorites. too. And I like The Godfather, too, you know. Let's take care of all family business. I mean, I like that. <laughs> Lance, thanks for being with us tonight. Coach, you, as usual, have the final word presented by Mercedes-Benz. Well, I have been asked at least 100 times this week, you know, how big is this game? So I'm going to ask everybody else out there, how big is the game to you? Because however big it is to you, then you make that kind of contribution for us and help our team and support our team with the kind of atmosphere that you create in the stadium, which has been fantastic all year long. Uh, because, you know, the one thing that I really want to do, and I hope you want to do, not for you, I, but for our players, you know, we've got 24 seniors on our team that are playing their last game in Bryant-Denny Stadium who have done a fantastic job for us, won 46 games in the last four years since they've been here. I, and in honor of them, it would be great for them to be able to win I, because, like I said before, this game lasts forever. Nobody forgets about it. So they're going to have to live with the consequences of this, just like we all will for a long, long time. So let's make it a, a specially special day I, for how we support them and what we do and how you can affect the game uh, because I want more than anything for these seniors and the players on our team to end this season and be able to accomplish the things that they've worked so hard for, all right, which is winning the West and then having the next opportunity to do the next thing. All right, and I think that's what they want. That's what they've worked hard for. Uh, and I don't know if everybody out there appreciates just how hard these guys work and how much they put into it and how many really tough games we've had and how this is going to be a really tough game. So, and every time that our fans have been there and created a tremendous atmosphere for us, it's helped our players play better and we play better as a team. So if this game means a lot to you, then this should be the best there is. Coach, happy Thanksgiving. See you Saturday. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. It's a blessed day. Thank you very much. And roll tide. We're going to go back, wrap things up in a moment. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. In 50 feet, turn left. Why are you driving so slowly? After a few drinks, I'm taking it slow. Well, you're not fooling the cop behind you. What? Get ready to pay in point one miles. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Okay, forest animals, kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow, have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. River, how's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. I love it. Uh, turtle. He's not here yet, man. Uh, he's late every morning. Okay. Squirrel. The forest has been preparing just for you. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. When I grow up, 
I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. I'm a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Wi-Fi everywhere. More playgrounds. Oh, more ice cream trucks. I was thinking more money in the pockets of local families come tax time. Can I change my answer? I was just kidding about the ice cream. When it comes to getting better tax refunds into the hands of local families, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Because great things happen when we live united. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Attention business owners, just in time for the holidays and the new year, the official Alabama Crimson Tide wall calendar is ready. It's the ultimate Bama wall calendar. Your favorite team displayed in action-packed photographs with your company's logo and custom message. It's the only way to have your company's message in front of your customers for 365 days of the Crimson Tide. Minimum order, 500 calendars for $1,500. To order your Crimson Tide wall calendar, call Cameron Burdick at 205-348-9613. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics, noting the remarkable efforts of student athletes and their institutions. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook. Find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. Welcome back to Hey Coach of the Nick Saban Show, presented by Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. We've been keeping up with two other Crimson Tide sporting events tonight. One is at the University of Missouri, where our volleyball team is taking on the Tigers. Unfortunately, Missouri won the first two sets, 27-25 and 25-23, and the Tigers lead set number three, 12-7. Better news from Foster Auditorium, where the Bama women are taking on Alabama A&M. It's just about final there. Crimson Tide rolling away with a 75 to 44 victory over Alabama A&M. Well, that about does it for this edition of Hey Coach. We got a lot to do coming up over the next several days. Obviously, the football game on Saturday is huge. 3.30 is the airtime for our Crimson Tide taking on the Auburn Tigers in the Iron Bowl at Bryant-Denny Stadium. On Sunday morning, the Bama women will be in Uncasville, Connecticut, taking on Quinnipiac, and that's a 9.55 start here on the network. And then Monday night, that's when we start our annual Monday run of Hey Coach. We're moving the show. We'll be on the air at 6 o'clock on Monday evening, talking about Alabama basketball, volleyball, and all kinds of sports here at the University of Alabama, including Crimson Tide football. So that's Monday night at 6 o'clock. Well, we thank all of you for joining us tonight. A special thanks to Keith and to Jan back in the studio, to Tom Stipe, our producer engineer here on site, to Neil and all the gang at Bob's Victory Grill. Most of all, we thank all of you for joining us on this Wednesday evening special Thanksgiving edition of Hey Coach of the Nick Saban Show. Hope we'll see you on Saturday at 3.30 for Bama against Auburn. Until then, happy Thanksgiving and roll tide, everybody. Live from Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa, this has been Hey Coach, presented by Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha.